so he did a lot of his own, like a of the style of style. He had to do a lot of his own, of course, he was trying to push up the hard way. Thank you so much, Shama Sawant, for being here with us. Hold it right here. Sisters, brothers, comrades, thank you so much for being here at this important event. Uh, we <laughs> we've been talking about what we've done in Seattle all day at the left forum. Clearly people are inspired by not only the victory of, a, of an openly socialist campaign for city council, but by the example of how such an electoral office can be used to energize a whole layer of new activists, young people, and use that office as a basis for propelling a new movement forward. And I think, you know, somebody somebody was saying, uh, in, I think it was Glenn Ford who was saying earlier that maybe there is something unique about Seattle. Uh, mm -hmm. no. I'm from Seattle. Take it from me. There is nothing, I mean, there are lots of unique things about Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? It's a beautiful city. <laughs> But there is nothing unique in the social conditions that have helped people to understand the crisis in the political system, the fact that capitalism will not ever fulfill the needs of the younger generation. There is nothing unique in the opening that we sensed in Seattle, an opening that it is the responsibility of the left to occupy. It is important for us to do this, not only because this opening has presented itself, but because if we don't occupy this vacuum, then it will be taken over by right-wing forces. Yeah. You know, when people people often say, you know, people often, you know, when, when they met us on the campaign trail last year, and even now in Seattle, you know, they'll say, I'm so excited that you're doing this. You know, we need we need third parties. We need, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a Tea Party or Socialist, we need something. 
And I always energetically argue against that. I come from, a, you know, I come from India. India has so many political parties that even I, who keeps up with, you know, politics there, can't keep up with the new formations. But there is no point in having newer formations, political formations, if they don't stand up for the interests of the working class. That's right. There is no point if the newer formations are simply reincarnations of the status quo parties, and they are not only not useful to us to build the left and to build the confidence of the working class, but they are counterproductive and deeply destructive because as long as we don't provide a genuine alternative, they will keep sucking up the energy of younger activists. They will keep uh, sweeping and taking in all the uh, desire for social change that exists and uh, you know, dumping it in a, in, in, a, in a complete abyss of disappointment and betrayal as it has happened year after year. And we cannot let that happen. And the only way we can counter all of that is by putting our alternatives forward, our genuine working class alternatives forward, the alternatives that, uh, that are not career politicians, but dedicated activists of the working class who have already demonstrated through their work in the labor movement or in the community their deep commitment to building the left, their commitment to the, to the interests of the working class, and their willingness to engage in self-sacrifice to put that movement first and last. And Howie Hawkins, the candidate whose event you are at today, is one such candidate. That's right. <laughs> running in New York is yet another example that there is nothing to do Just keep going. <laughs> there is nothing unique about Seattle. Now you have to shout. I don't know if this is working anymore. It's fine. It's fine. Just shout. There is nothing unique about Seattle in the opening for the left. The fact that his campaign has created so much excitement is proof that we need this in New York. And look at what's happened in New York City last year. Bill de Blasio's landslide victory shows that people are really, really <coughs> hungry for alternatives. That's right. And I was struck, I mean, I wasn't in New York at that time, but I was struck by uh, looking at this contrast of two photographs that were published in the same article in the New York Times where one of the photos had a long line of black working class women you know, lined up to attend de Blasio's inauguration in the Gulf. And at the same time, the inauguration ceremony being officiated by the Clintons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What does this tell us? This tells us that de Blasio, just like we have predicted about every other Democratic Party candidate, right. will not deliver on the promises that they have made. And I don't care whether he has good intentions or not. When we, when we were campaigning against Obama, every, you know, I encountered this question all the time. You know, but don't you think Obama is a nice guy? I don't care. <laughs> minds because we know that by by the by virtue of being a prominent representative of the Democratic Party establishment neither Obama nor de Blasio is capable of delivering on their promises however good their intentions might be the party establishment is completely married to big business interests you know Obama got the record vote of Latinos, black people, environmental activists, but he also got record 
financial contributions from yeah. the financial sector. The only way we can break this contradiction is by putting ourselves forward as a genuine, credible, and winnable alternative. Yes. We have shown this in Seattle. It is possible to win. We ran another campaign in Minneapolis where our candidate, Ty Moore, an Occupy Homes activist, came close to winning. We're going to run another candidate, Jess Spear, who's going to speak later. She's going to run against Frank Chop, the Democratic House Speaker we ran against in 2012. And they are trembling in fear right now. And we have to keep them trembling. Yes. We right. cannot let them co-opt this new, this resurgence of the desire to fight back in any way. They are, like they have done in, in Seattle, they will try to pick up our flag and run with it and said that we did it. Mm -hmm. We have to keep outwitting them. And in order to do that, we have to have uh, forces that continue to build strong independent working class movements and independent working class electoral candidates and a party, uh, or, or at least at this moment a vision of an independent party has to be part and parcel of this movement. And I really hope that everyone here, but especially those of you who live in New York City, will completely throw yourself into Howie Hawkins' campaign. No working class victory is possible without hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of activists dedicating themselves to the cause, spending every free moment on the campaign. The kind of dedication you need is for you to know that I'm, I'm, uh, I just got out of work, it's 4 o'clock on Friday, I'm going to go to the campaign office, pick up a few posters and put them on telephone calls. You have to do that. You have to know that every hour you spend, you, every one of you, is going to be critical. How he is going to do his part, he's already been an energetic advocate of the labor movement. He has proven his credentials. He is going to be working enormously hard, day and night, but he needs your support. He needs you to be there day and night with him, and he needs your financial contributions. He needs your efforts to raise financial resources because we can't run on empty. Right. So I hope yeah. you will take this message to heart and show people that there is nothing great about Seattle. Oh, what's Seattle? You know, we're going to show what New York City and New York State is all about. That's right. <laughs>
and you know, just a year after the first workers went out on strike, we have won a $15 an hour minimum wage. As you all know, in the wake of electing the first socialist, socialist alternative with allies in the unions and also community organizations launched 15 now. Because all the campaigns that we had seen, all the Fight for 15 campaigns, which were incredibly important for sparking the movement, for getting workers involved, were not open to community involvement. There were a lot of supporters out there that wanted directly to be involved, wanted to know way ahead of time if there was going to be a rally so they could get support around it and help it win. So we launched 15 now to really be a spearhead for this and get community involvement. We launched action groups. We had big rallies, big marches every single month forcing the political establishment not only to acknowledge 15, but that all workers should be covered. But friends, comrades, sisters, and brothers, this was not done for free. So what I'm here to ask you all to do is to please dig deep and donate to 15 now. We won a $15 an hour minimum wage in record time with just $150,000. And let me put that into context for you. Over a 10 year period, this $15 an hour minimum wage is going to take from the top three billion dollars and put it into the pockets of working people. Yeah. Yeah. It was entirely funded by unions, by the solidarity fund of our newly elected social city council member who said I'm not going to take $120,000 salary, I'm going to take the average wage and I'm going to put the rest in a solidarity fund. And ordinary working people making monthly donations of 15, 20, 50, $100 a month to help us print all those lovely placards and picket signs you see, the t-shirts, all the leaflets, the endless leaflets that we have to print out to let people know about rallies. That all costs money. So I'm asking you all to please help us spread this nationally, spread this to New York where it started, to overturn the ban in Albany to let you pass a $15 an hour minimum wage here in New York. Donate at 15now.org. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Jess and Shama, for your inspiring words. Um, and so, um, I guess Howie Hawkins has been, um, he's been running for office a number of years, and um, he was my campaign manager in 2012. And um, I'm very happy to be working with him again this year. Um, I think a lot of people have been inspired by how he's um, organizing, and I think you will um, be happy to hear from him. So, Howie. They came out said an unnamed working families party mm -hmm. candidate could get 24 percent. Right. Yep. Well, I'm a working team, so with a name, Howie yeah. Hawkins. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I think that poll was about us because yeah. we are running against Cuomo. We have no hesitation. Right. 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 Working families party right now. You can hear the screams of pain. Arms are being twisted. Yeah. Right. There was a yeah. deal cut. I heard a report from somebody in Park Slope that all the black SUVs and all the security have been outside the Blasio's house all week while he's got formal people and working families people. He's knocking heads together to get a deal. And the report last night was they got a deal. Cuomo has to support getting a Democratic majority in the state Senate. Well, duh. Well, you know, in fact, he likes Republicans there. They're a buffer for him. And he likes those independent, so-called independent Democrats. If I was independent, I don't know what. They, uh, they, they totally tied to, you know, the corporate money. They are a buffer for him for many progressive changes that uh, may come from the Democratic Assembly. So that's one. Two, he's got to support home rule for uh, minimum wage, which would allow New York to have a higher than state standard. And three, they got to support public campaign finance. Um, Cuomo could give it lip service. But what's he going to do after the election? He's going to lay it on the line for those issues? What's his record? Hell no. That's right. Yep. You know, his record is we're going to go after the public employees, especially them 
and teachers, you know, that are wrecking our kids' education. And he's trying to privatize schools. That's why Brian Jones, an educator, a teacher for nine years in New York City Public Schools, is my running mate because As I began the campaign calling for a Green New Deal, economic human rights, we've been talking about since 1944 when Roosevelt, State of the Union Address to Congress, said we should have the right to a job, a decent wage, health care, good education, affordable housing, transit, the things that ought to be basic and taken for granted, and we don't have despite Democrats being in charge of this country, majority in Congress, running this state for 71 years since that speech was made. The same demands that were brought down to Washington, D.C., the 1963 March for Jobs and Freedom, they asked for a $2 minimum wage in 1963. That's worth $15.44 today. So when we ask for $15, we're being modest. So, you know, I think what we got to tell the working families, voters, the leadership's cut a deal. They'll probably get the endorsement for Cuomo, but there are voters out there that, that vote for them and you know, get involved for the best of reasons because they think we're going to fight for progressive policies, and they're not going to get them. And what I would tell them is we feel your pain. Right. We're here for you. <laughs> You're welcome to work and organize and vote for us for the things that your party was supposedly talking about. Now, that means in that poll, 24% for the unnamed candidate from the left, 24% for the Republican, 39% for the Democrat. I guarantee you, we get a few debates where I get to take Cuomo on for his policies, put our policies forward, and we're going to be up on top. <laughs> Because what we are talking about is what working people want. We know from the polls, the problem of politics in this country is that what the people want doesn't get translated into public policy because the two parties are run by the 1%. Yeah, right. You may have heard this study out of Princeton and Northwestern. They went through 1,100 policies before Congress. The working people got none of them. That was in conflict with the 1%. We got nothing. That's because we don't have our own party. We can't lobby the elite to do for us. We got to do for ourselves. We need our own party. So this is not just about issues. It's about building a party of working people that organizes, doesn't just mobilize. You know how all these liberal groups, you know, they get you on their list and they e-blast you and say, do this, do that, come to this meeting, and we'll talk about it. But they don't let you talk. They tell you what's going on. Our model's got to be what SNCC did in Mississippi on, with the Freedom Democrats. Moses, Harvard math professor who spoke for the Freedom Democrats. It wasn't Muriel Tillenhouse, who was our lieutenant, our uh, vice presidential candidate with Ralph Nader in New York in '96, snake veteran. Come on. Wasn't Coley Clark, who we run for Senate. They were coming out of, you know, Moses out of Harvard, Tillenhouse out of Howard, Coley Clark out of Tougaloo. That's right. And they organized the grassroots people. And who did they pick to speak for them? Fannie Lou Hamer. That's right. And when it came time for the sellout deal, the Democrats were trying to say, they told, they sent Hubert Humphrey right. and uh, Mondale, the liberals, Johnson sent them, said, tell these people, we'll take care of them in four years. That's Give them two seats in the back of the delegation and seat the Dixiecrats. That's right. And Fannie Lou Hamer famously said, you know, I've been sick and tired all my life. And I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes. All right. And told Humphrey and Mondale where they could stick that proposal. And at the time, you know, Martin Luther King and the civil rights leadership were saying, take the deal, take the deal. But Fannie Lou Hamer, she was working class. That's right. She come from picking cotton. Yeah. She was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And she was not going to sell out. Nope. What did she get from selling out? She would get nothing. nothing. Right. And that's the kind of party we need where we act and speak for ourselves. So my challenge to us is, okay, we're, all, we're poised. Maybe we can get 10%. You know, it's going to be difficult. People go for her name, you put a name on it, the vote comes down. We don't have the $33 million that Cuomo has to advertise, because that's how most people hear about this stuff. 
they don't follow the uh, news very closely. So, you know, our challenge is, are we ready for this influx of people? Are we ready to organize ready. and not just mobilize? Yeah. Yeah. So, while we got our Green New Deal and all these other issues we're going to raise, I think the big issue that Shama mentioned is that we need a party of the working people and we now have to figure out how to organize. And all these people are going to be interested in the campaign. Are we going to follow up with them? Are we going to get them to a meeting? Now are we going to listen, not just tell them what to do? In other words, build a real counter-independent movement and culture. Because all our people are getting is messages from the corporate media. And then the liberal foundations fund these groups that say they're the progressives. But, you know, the revolution won't be funded. Not by the 1%. Yeah. That's right. It's got to be funded by the 99%. And I don't want to steal the thunder of the money pictures that's coming, but I will say this, our political independence depends on our financial independence. And in this country, we've got the idea that somebody else is going to fund our movement. No, all of us got to put in a little, and there are a hell of a lot more of us than there are them. And I'll tell you, Shama outspent the Democrat, I believe. Ty Moore, that other socialist alternative candidate, outspent the Democrat. I ran for city council in Syracuse, got as high as 48%. I outspent the Democrat. Because wow. I had a lot of little contributors, and he just had a few developers and landlords. Right, right. You know, we got enough of us that we can compete. But are we ready to do that? Are we ready to be responsible? And everybody got to pay dues, like you're in a union, you pay your dues, you get your benefits. We got to do that for the party. And then we all got to be active and, and contribute, like Shama said. It's not, I, I would be a little more modest, fit it into your schedule and make it a long-term commitment. Because it's a marathon, not a sprint. But everybody... Everybody's got something to contribute, and you know, like I've been saying, it's not my campaign; it's our campaign, right? right? So, <laughs> welcome to our campaign. I think this year we're really going to make a difference, and we're going to change the dynamic in New York. So, after the election, they want to know what the left thinks. They're not going to go to some liberal Democrat or another line for them to work with Famous Party. They're going to come talk to the Greens. So we're poised to really change the whole conversation and the whole power structure. So uh, let's keep going. Thank you. sisters and comrades and friends and allies and colleagues and co-workers and all of y'all. Can anybody come more this way? That will actually help solve the bottleneck if you can move this way. There's a lot of seating over here, like nice couches and benches just asking for you to sit on them. I want to tell you a story that when I started working as a New York City public school teacher, it was in Harlem about a decade ago. That means I was at ground zero for what I didn't realize at the time, but quickly discovered was one of the nation's central experiments in the corporate privatization of our schools. And every time I tried to fight back against budget cuts, 
Every time I tried to push back against school closings, every time I tried to speak out against charter schools, I ran up against a Democrat. Right, right. Yes, sir. It was the Democratic Party, and it is the Democratic Party, that is organizing the sale of our schools to people like Pearson. That is what they are doing. A few years into my career as a teacher, a beautiful thing happened. People decided in this city to occupy Wall Street. And notice how seemingly overnight people, not only in this country, but all over the world, identified with Occupy, knew exactly what those people were talking about, and were trying to do the same thing. That's what's out there still. Occupy has not gone away. The people who experienced that still feel the burning reasons for them that, that made them get out there in the first place. Those issues still burn. Who cleared Occupy off the streets in city after city? It was the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party organized the death of Occupy. The Democratic Party is organizing the death and sale of our schools. Look at Andrew Cuomo. Cuomo is busy trying to take rent control apartments and hurry them onto the market here in New York City. Cuomo is busy trying to push crappy deals on our unions and close our hospitals. Cuomo is busy trying to sell off our schools to private operators. So other than attacking where we live, where we work, where we get health, and where we send our kids to school, other than that, he's a great candidate. <laughs> he's a perfect candidate for working people. As long as you don't get sick, have a job, or try to live somewhere. <laughs> the fact that the Working Families Party are on the precipice of endorsing him is a crime and a scandal. It's outrageous that they would even consider this. That is what we are dealing with. And, and brothers and sisters, this is a unique moment for us historically for another reason. Because I really agree with what Howie and Kashama said about the relationship of our movements to these attempts at these electoral campaigns. That is, these things need to be feeding each other. We can't put the cart before the horse. If we run a campaign and have nothing on the ground, then we know that we're sunk. We know we're not going anywhere. But the very issue that makes Cuomo vulnerable, maybe more than any other issue, the issue that with which he has angered millions of people in this state, is the very issue where we have a movement. Education. Yes, sir. Finally, finally, the battle is joined. Finally, students are walking out of their classes. Parents are opting out of the test, and teachers in some places are refusing to administer the damn thing. We have a vision of this campaign to not only go after that anger at Cuomo, but also give something back, make a contribution, spread and develop and strengthen and give confidence to the movement to defend and improve our public schools. Do you want to see that kind of an electoral campaign if you are right now? I mean, the Democrats just can't get it together. But we have our shit together. And this is a unique opportunity for us. How we said that our political independence is based on our financial independence. So if you agree wholeheartedly with everything I've just said, now is the time to pull out your wallet. <laughs> now you're laughing, but I'm dead serious. <laughs> because now is the time to pull out your wallet. Now is the time to cast your mind to your debit card or your credit card, because we take both and think about what it is you are prepared to give to this campaign. Because if we do not have financial independence, then it doesn't matter which union is angry at Cuomo and wants to meet with us, we can't go meet with them. It doesn't matter what talk show is willing to sell us ad space on, to be on television, so all your coworkers will hear about this game. We can't even afford to make the ad, let alone to place it. It doesn't matter if we cannot open up an office in New York City and hire an organizer. Let's say we pay an organizer $15 an hour for 20 hours a week, that's $300 a week, times four weeks a month, times five months between now and the election, we're talking about $6,000 just to have one part-time worker. We need money. And I know, because I do it too, that we all give a lot of money 
to a lot of people that we don't like because we try to keep the lights on and we gotta pay the landlord to keep him off our back and all of these places we hate to give our money. But this is a place where you're going to see your money working for you. You're gonna see your money when you see Cuomo sweating trying to respond to questions from Howie Hawk. You're gonna see your money working for you when it's not you giving the leaflet to your coworker, it's your coworker giving the leaflet to you. Because they're so excited. And they're like, why haven't you given me a leaflet yet? You're gonna see your money at work when working people in this city, in this state, See in this campaign the reflection of their own hopes and dreams. And when we start to have the confidence in ourselves that we don't have to beg for crumbs from the table. I just want to say, well, I'll say it. No, I'll say it now. I, wanna, I just want to say, I, I want to, look, this has been thrilling so far. The, the extent to which people have come forward and embrace this campaign has been truly inspiring. It has inspired me. It made me feel like, wow, this is a unique opportunity that we have to do something special. I really believe that. But I know what's coming. Because the Democratic Party will not take what we're trying to do lying down. And that means they will come after us. And the more successful we are, the more vicious will be the attacks. That is absolutely what we are up against. We lost a great poet this week. And she said something that's been on my mind like every day this week. She said, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Brothers and sisters, we will rise. Don't listen to the twisted, bitter lies they're going to say about us. They're going to say the left can't work together. We're working together in this room right now. They're going to say that we can't organize a serious campaign that expires people. We're organizing a serious campaign right now. The Hawkins campaign is already more successful than it's ever been in this state. The people who are going to be the naysayers are the people who are the most committed to the Democratic Party. And you know it's coming. I want to prepare you now for it. And when you hear them say those things, lesser evil, we got to take the smart option. Got to calculate. Understand what that's really about. That's about lowering our expectations. That's about helping us to internalize the idea that we deserve less. That we deserve whatever it is that they might, whatever crumb they might throw us. This campaign is going to be about raising our expectations. I have a dream. That's right. We have to we have to collect donations right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I'm going to ask a very serious question. Is there somebody here in this audience who's prepared to give a thousand dollars to this campaign? <laughs> I know, I know, times are bit tough. Not everybody here can do that. Does, does time count? No, you can give it over time. Well, give it, can you give it to us in a chunk and then... Uh, can I give it to you in my time? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, that's good. Brother's volunteering his time. A thousand dollars worth of his time. Thank you. But we need cash. We can't open an office just with time. We need cash. We need both. That's right. Yeah. We don't, we don't accept Bitcoin. That's the only thing we don't accept. Is there anybody here as well? James? Woo! Let's hear it for James Lane. The man just pledged a thousand dollars for the Howie Hawkins campaign. Yes. Are there any others like him before we move on? Are there any others? I'm the only one. Bro. No, no, you're not. <laughs> you might not be. We're not leaving any money on the table. Is there anybody else? James is one of a kind. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Is there anybody else who's willing to give $1,000 to this campaign? doesn't have to be in one shot, right? Well, I prefer it in one shot. Uh, two people can chip in. Is there anybody here? Oh, is that a yes? No. Oh, okay. You've got to be... 
Be, be careful as you raise your glass, because next thing you know, I'll be at you. You've got to be is okay there... with uncomfortable silence. That's right, I am okay with uncomfortable yes, silences. That's a good teacher technique, that's right. That's how they sit for a while. That's right, that's right. You think about a thousand, you probably pay that more than that to Time Warner Cable in a year. Just so you can watch HBO, there's nothing else on. <laughs> Except now you'll turn it on and you'll actually see Howie Hawkins. <laughs> That's what your money would be for. That's right. Hey, Ryan, yes. We can, take credit cards right behind we can take credit cards right behind me. So if you want to swipe it, we can swipe it. If somebody's thinking about it, I want to give them the opportunity. Is there anybody here who right now is willing to give $750 to this campaign? I know a thousand slides, four figures, but once we get down into three figures, I know you're going to be able. Anybody? That's right. We can take installments. We can take whatever it is you need. I'm thrilled about this campaign. You know, our campaign is going to rely on money. That's just bottom line. In fact, what we need to do, so people are thinking about, when you're sitting there calculating what you can give us, think about it this way. Every little bit that you give, helps us to hire people immediately. The, the things that we want to do next week, we cannot do without being able to bring people on staff, open up offices, and hit the ground running. We absolutely need your money and donations and contributions right now. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. You don't... All right. All right. How about five hundred dollars? Yes. Let's give an applause for the brother on the floor over here. Just donated five hundred dollars for the campaign. Now we're getting somewhere. Thank you, brother. We really appreciate that. Is there anybody else for whom five hundred dollars feels like a comfortable amount? Like you know. Yes, you're inspired enough to give $500 to this campaign. Anybody else? I'm looking at everybody. Thank you over there. Yes. Awesome. Brothers and sisters over there, I would beg your attention, because we still need to raise money. Thank you, $250 yeah. right here. Sign up at the table. Thank you. Nothing wrong with the solid plans, guys. Nothing wrong with All right, we are now at $250. We just had one of those. Is there anybody else who's willing to donate $250 to this campaign? $250 to this campaign. Thank you, brother, right there. Yes. That's how we're going to hit the ground running. Thank you for these contributions. $250. Now, let's stay at $250. I think that's a dual bum out. Teachers, people with the good union jobs over there. Come on, teachers. $250,000. We have any transit workers out here? First of all, how many people in this audience are educators one way or another? Yes. How many people here are public school parents? Yes. How many people are students of some kind? Okay. <laughs> all right, very good. We need it from all of y'all. Is there anybody here who's willing to donate $100 to this campaign right now? Thank you, right over there. Three more right over there. At the bar. One, two, three hundred dollars over there in one hundred dollar bits. Two hundred dollars. Uh, uh, I skipped over. <laughs> Thank you. Can we get an applause for all these people donating at the three hundred, two hundred, and one hundred dollar level? Yes. This is what it's about. You 
are setting us off on the right foot. All right. Any more last call for a hundred dollars to the campaign? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I think we might be able to go to the table over there. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do credit. I don't think I follow. Oh, no, it's okay. You can slay by. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, that's right. If you want your donation on the record, it has to be over a hundred dollars for us to file it with the Board of Elections. Anybody want to give fifty dollars to this campaign? Fifty dollars. Who has not yet already given? Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Yes. Yes. Is that people waving to the bartender are donating? <laughs> All right, people. Thank you so much for your money, for your donations. If you want to donate any other amounts, please come on up, and we will accept them. Okay. Hold Listen, I want, I want everybody hold on, to at least get something. But I tell you, Andrew Cuomo, 45% of his money comes from donations over $40,000. 81% from donations over $10,000. 99% plus percent from donations over $1,000. In other words, the billionaires and hundreds of millionaires, a few hundred of them, less than a thousand, gave him $33 million and counting. What we want to do is, in the first three months of our campaign, have more people that gave something than gave to Cromwell in the first three years of his campaign, which is only a few thousand. So we want everybody that's five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen, can't hear you, that's off. Put something in so we can we got more contributors. Candidates 99% got more donors than Governor 1%. That's, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. When we file in July. So everybody, please give at least something. Thank you. Yeah. All right.